Okay, good morning. Uh, we get into our meditation posture. We continue with our exploration of Sankara of volitional formations. Okay, sitting upright and relaxed. Check whether there's any tension in the body. Gradually, from the top of the head, gradually down, all the way to the feet. And if there is any tension, relax that part. Letting go of the past and the future. There's nothing to do other than paying attention to the volitional, to the intentional aspect of the mind. Have our eyes open, we can see the floor in front of us, or maybe the person in front of us. And together with seeing, there may arise an intention to see more details, to explore especially if it's an interesting object, an unusual object. This intention to see more clearly. Notice that intention. Likewise, when we're hearing, we're hearing the sound from the traffic, or hearing the birds in the background. Or hearing the motorbike. There might be intention. Oh, should this sound please go away? Intention or a preference for the disappearance of something. That's also an intention. Or I want to hear more of the birds. It's another intention. Why does the mind want to hear more? of the birds. Oh, because we're conditioned like that. We often say the birds are singing. I like to listen to that. Somehow we are conditioned to like the sound of the birds. Did I really choose to listen? Or did the mind choose almost on its own? Because it was intentioned and was conditioned to like, to appreciate a certain sound. So the intention comes up. 
I want to listen. I have certain experiences on the body. You can feel the temperature, a little bit of the wind. Again, we didn't create this intention, it just came to us. We didn't ask for it. It is conditioned. When the body becomes a little bit uncomfortable, we want to move. Uh, if a certain part is a bit itchy, we want to scratch. The intention to move, the intention to scratch, is conditioned by the unpleasant feeling. And the intention arose just on its own. I didn't wish it into existence, it just came. In order for the intention to scratch, to arise, there have to be several conditions. Maybe a fly or mosquito sitting on the skin. And then after a while, it becomes itchy. The oil tension is going there. We notice it. These are all conditions. And then the intention to scratch comes up. I haven't created this intention, it just came. I'm not the owner of this. It's just another phenomena. Conditioned phenomena. We all came here to listen to the Dhamma, to meditate. We might feel we have chosen to come. And in a sense, yes, we did. But did we really? Even the intention to listen to the Dhamma, to meditate, is also conditioned by past experience. by the Dhamma talks we have heard, the books we have read, previous meditation experience. All together made the mind see value in meditation. And therefore it is chosen. I am coming to Thames this morning. Again, the intention is a conditioned thing. When the conditions are there, a certain intention comes. When the conditions change, the intentions change as well. Before coming to Tim's, there was the intention to sit in a car and drive over. But once we have arrived, that intention 
has ceased. It's not here anymore. Because the two conditions have changed. The goal has been fulfilled. So, so the intention is gone. Again, you didn't choose to make it go away. It's gone on its own. Because the conditions have changed. Sometimes you go to the market, uh, buying food, groceries. And every now and then you may pass by some fruit or some type of food that you find really interesting and the mind wants to have. Why does it want to buy it? Why is the intention, the volition to purchase coming up? Because there was a previous experience based on which we understand, oh, this gives me pleasant feeling. Therefore now, whenever the mind, the body witnesses a similar situation or uh, sees the same type of food, craving arises, intention to buy, to get arises. For another type of food, where maybe last time you got a stomach ache afterwards, after eating it, the intention to avoid is there. No, no, I'm not going to touch this. Again, it's conditioned. To what degree can I even say, I am making these choices? It seems the mind is choosing on its own. There's no separate controller or owner of those intentions. Feeling feels, perception perceives, volitional formations make volitions, intentions. All just nature. Not me, not mine, not myself. preferences, our likes or dislikes, they are often conditioned since long time in the past. Many of them, even from childhood onwards. Whenever I want to go on a holiday, to what kind of places do I want to go? 
maybe on a beach, or maybe to a lake, or on a mountain. Why is that? Why do I prefer mountains over lakes? Or maybe there's some memories associated with that. Maybe my grandparents took me up to a mountain when I was small and I really enjoyed that, playing with them. And even now, so many years later, the mind just feels comfortable, feels it enjoyable to be in a similar environment. It may feel as if a separate person, as if we have chosen, but actually our intentions are not arising completely out of the blue. They are also influenced, conditioned by the past. And present circumstances. Indeed, with a close friend, I might go up to a mountain. But maybe with an acquaintance from the workplace, I might choose to see the movies. So there's past conditioning as well as present conditioning. Who are the people who are around? How do I feel? How hot or cold is it? And many more. All of which together condition our choices, our preferences. How can I even call this my choice? I'm the one who chooses if it's conditioned by so many things. Therefore, there's no point in clinging, identifying with our preferences. Because they are just conditioned, changeable. Seeing and understanding the conditioned nature of our volitions. There's a sense of letting go. They are nothing special. Not worth clinging to. Or we can detach from our intentions, from the intentions of the mind, which are conditioned, the more ease they can be when sometimes our intentions are not being fulfilled, when our preferences are not being met. Both the external world is conditioned, as well as our intentions. Sometimes they sync up, 
We get what we want. We feel good. Sometimes we don't sync up. We don't get what we want. But understanding that what we want is also just conditioned. Highly conditioned by our childhood, upbringing, life experience, present circumstances. I don't need to cling to my preferences. There's a sense of letting go. Release. Putting our likes and dislikes aside for a moment. And simply being with whatever is. This is one way of experiencing and dealing with the conditioned nature of sankharas. We are slowly coming to an end of this meditation and get back to normal. Difficult to see Sankaras or not so difficult? Easier. Easy to know, I like this, I don't like that. But the interesting part is when you start to identify why am I liking this? Why am I not liking that? Because sometimes other people, you can see, oh, they have other preferences. So why is that? And then often, yeah, very quickly we can understand, oh, they have a different conditioning from us. Which is better, I don't know. <laughs> it's just different. It also helps us to understand better and have realistic expectations from ourselves, from others, and understand. Yeah, different conditioning will lead to different preferences, likes and dislikes. So this way living together becomes much easier by not taking our own intentions and volitions so personally. The same for other people's intentions and volitions. They are conditioned. Sometimes if we knew of a person or their conditioning, quite clear, how could he or she possibly choose any different? Because, oh, that's how she grew up. These are her parents. This is her life experience. Of course, she will choose like that. <laughs> Makes sense. Often we just don't know, but if we knew, uh, it would be quite easy to understand. It's okay, we keep it at that for a day. Uh, let us share merit with our departed relatives and friends and all beings. Itang benya tinang ho tu sokita hon tu nya tayo. Idang do nya tinang ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo. Idang wo nya tinang ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo. Eta vata cha am he he sam patang punya sam patang sabi sata alumodan tu sab. And lastly, let us make an aspiration towards Nibbana. Idang me punyang asavakaya vahang hodu. Idang me punyang 
Nipanasa Pachayo Hoto Sandu Sandu Sandu